According to the Guinness Book of World Records, Madam C.J. Walker was one of America's first self-made millionaires. But did you know that there were others, some of whom were Madam Walker's predecessors? Well, today, I'm about to get all up in your black business and highlight four black millionaires whom you probably did not learn about in school. Hey bosses, it's Dr. B, your favorite business doctor. Welcome to the channel where business and history meet up every single week. First things first, if you find this content to be informative, please go ahead and smash the like and subscribe buttons. Also, feel free to comment. I promise you that I read every single comment and enjoy responding to them. Okay, let's get started. So many of us are familiar with Madam C.J. Walker. Even if we didn't learn about her in school, her story has resounded based on the degree to which she pioneered the beauty industry. In addition, her story was recently chronicled in the 2020 movie, Self Made. Let me be clear, Madam C.J. Walker has earned every single accolade directed at her. However, she was a member of a whole group of millionaires of which she was not the first to achieve millionaire status. Often untold are the stories of other black millionaires, some of whom survived enslavement and through grit and moxie, blazed trails for themselves and others. Today, I'm delving into the lives of four remarkable black millionaires these individuals overcame incredible odds during a time of immense racial inequality to achieve uber financial success. Be sure to stick around to the end of this video. I'll suggest reasons why many of them have gone unsung. Number one, William Alexander Leidsdorf. William Alexander Leidsdorf was born in 1810 in what is now the U.S. Virgin Islands. He is known for his contributions to the early development of California, particularly during the Mexican-American War and Gold Rush eras. He's also known for his varied business ventures in San Francisco. He held various civic and leadership positions, including serving as San Francisco's first elected treasurer. He built California's first public school. Then when gold was discovered in the Sacramento Valley, the value of his property and businesses increased to over $1 million. Then tragedy struck. In 1848, he died of a sudden illness. After his death, Joseph Folsom, a real estate investor in the man Folsom Prison is named after, found Mr. Leidorf's estranged mother, who was his sole heir. He convinced her to sign away her son's property for significantly less than it was worth. Number two, Robert Reed Church. Robert Reed Church was born in Mississippi into enslavement in 1839. He later became known as the South's first black millionaire. After the steamship he worked on was seized in Tennessee, he settled in the Memphis area. He started his business career as a Memphis saloon owner and even survived being attacked by a white mob during the Memphis race riot of 1866. He eventually expanded his business ventures into real estate and owning and leasing properties. His strategic investments made him incredibly wealthy. In 1906, Church, along with several other prominent black Memphians, established the Solvent Savings Bank. Number three, Annie Malone. Annie Malone was born in Illinois in 1869 to formerly enslaved parents. Miss Malone was a chemist, entrepreneur, and philanthropist who founded her own beauty and cosmetics company, namely Poro College. She developed innovative hair care products and sales strategies that revolutionized 
the industry and helped her amass a substantial fortune. She is also known for hiring the young Sarah Breedlove, AKA Madam CJ Walker, as one of her door-to-door -door sales agent. At one point, her wealth was valued at over $10 million. Ms. Malone was a major donor to a multitude of causes, including education and HBCUs, including Howard University, and she gave away much of her wealth by the time of her death. Number four, Mary Ellen Pleasant. Mary Ellen Pleasant was an African-American entrepreneur, abolitionist, and civil rights activist. She was born in 1814. There are various accounts of her early life. Some indicate she was born in Virginia. Other accounts indicate she was born in Philadelphia, Pennsylvania. She amassed wealth on both coasts of the United States, first in New England, and then she traveled to California during the Gold Rush era. Ms. Pleasant invested shrewdly and widely. She put money in Wells Fargo and mining operations. To avoid controversy, most of her investments were under the name of Thomas Bell, a white man, and Ms. Pleasant's frequent business partner. Together, they amassed some $30 million by winning a landmark suit against San Francisco's streetcar system. She ultimately paved the way for desegregation of public transit in California. In her later years, Ms. Pleasant revealed that she had funded and helped plan abolitionist John Brown's raid on Harper's Ferry, Virginia. After her investment partner, Mr. Bell died. His widow sued Miss Pleasant for control of their shared multi-million dollar fortune. Miss Pleasant lost that legal battle. So you may ask, why are these four extraordinary individuals unsung? Well, we have to remember the environment at the time. Widespread virulence and codified racism led to the black elite being attacked demonized and even swindled out of their wealth. Therefore, many adopted covert practices such as using white proxies to perform financial transactions to avoid being excluded based on race. In addition, many kept their wealth a secret until they were outed. For example, Mary Ellen Pleasant portrayed herself as a housekeeper and a cook long after she was wealthy. But Madam C.J. Walker was different. She was bold, she was brash, and she was fearless. So that's what helped her become memorialized as the first or the first female self-made millionaire. Her explicit displays of wealth helped her earn that title.